Hey, what's going on, everyone? Um, back with another iteration of Making Amends. Um, I apologize. I've definitely been pretty absent, haven't, haven't been uh, keeping up with these things. Uh, life just kind of gets in the way, but um, yeah, I've just been super busy with work and everything like that. But uh, I kind of wanted to go over a few topics, uh, realizing that we have a few new subscribers uh since i've done my last iteration and just kind of let you all know like where my head's been at uh kind of what i've been up to and um i have been selling quite a few knives or just kind of like whittling down my collection and what i enjoy to carry but there's a few that i've gotten and i brought out kind of my main knife pouch right here with uh newer acquisitions that uh that i'm pretty excited about actually um the first one that i am really uh pretty pumped to finally own is going to be this triple lot design uh strider smf um looks like that um i had been wanting to get my hands on one of these for probably the better part of 10 years and um, they'd pop up on ebay from time to time but they you know the price was just kind of like astronomical for it but i mean this thing is it's pretty old it was in rough shape when i got it i did end up sharpening it which um you know, pretty happy with the way that it came out on the, the Wicked Edge, but um, it's actually one of the, the first topics, I guess I'll just knock it out right now, um, sharpening knives. Um, I think that I've definitely learned a lot and I appreciate it, my buddy Mark, who um, he's kind of helped me get my feet wet with sharpening on the Wicked Edge. Um, it takes time and, and I think I was kind of under the guise when I first got the sharpening system you know you type in YouTube videos and there's a dude that's like oh yeah I sharpen I think they were like chef knives for people in his neighborhood and he was like you know I go from 200 grit to 1200 grit in four minutes and he like times himself doing it and I guess that kind of meets them out but um I think that was a little bit of my entering argument or my entering experience with the Wicked Edge and that's just not the case like I mean if you want to do it right which I mean that's why you buy a sharpening system that is to that caliber um it's gonna take time there's there's no real shortcuts you're either doing it right or you're not doing it right and um I've definitely learned a lot about sharpening but for instance like this SMF um you know starting at 200 and then I ended up going up to kind of like a, a diamond compound like paste and straps and all this stuff I mean before you know it you have two hours sunk in and, and I realized I mean again people you can comment say whatever you will like I mean I just I wanted to do it right I was taking my time this was a more expensive knife that I actually wanted to learn how to do it correctly but there really aren't any secrets like that's uh that that's how long it takes to do it right um I've also since uh, my last couple of videos, so I still have my Demco 8020. Uh, this one has the original goat scales on it. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of that knife. I also ended up picking up, it originally came with um, orange scales, but I got a, a shark foot, um, looks like that. So I got some green scales for it when Demco had them um, in stock. I really do like the 8020. Um, my ultimate plan is to uh, to gift one of these to my dad because I definitely don't need two of them. Um, don't worry, people who have been uh, you know watching my channel for a while, I still do have my large CRK thirty one uh, Damascus and carbon fiber. Um, really like that. And then um, the other one that I've been carrying a lot has actually been this uh, J Cape three point five, which um, you know it's reop made. I've I've done a few videos on the J Cape three point five, and I've also since I got this one, I've also owned the three inch. Um, that's the last video that I did on here. Um, I ended up selling that one just because I mean it's nice, but at at a certain point you have too many knives, I think. Which I mean I don't even have that many, but I'm still even for me though. I'm like oh, what am I gonna carry this thing? But I really do like the J Cape 3.5. Realizing it's made by Riot, people will say that it's overpriced all day, but I think it's a great knife. It feels great in my hand, and um, I'm just a huge fan of it. Um, the last knife that kind of gets most of, as far as folders go, that gets most of my, you know carry time in my pocket is going to be this Curtis F3 medium. This one's in Magna Cut. Um, got it on a trade and I'm a huge fan of it. Um, it is a super, super fidgety knife and, you know, very well made. And 
I'm a huge fan. So that's kind of uh, where I've been at with my collection. Um, as far as new things that happen, and this was like one of my 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 topics I wrote down here, and I have it in my pocket actually. I did end up so after I got the uh, Tracker Dan Blood Shark, um, which it turned out to be an older one. I think it was from 2016 or 17. You know, very thick. Um, I sold that because I was like, you know what, the RMJ Tactical one, that's gonna meet my needs. I can save some money and, and just get that one. Um, I ended up selling the RMJ Blood Shark, the original one for, I think it was like 800 or $850. And um, that was what I had into it, so no drama there. And um, it was kind of funny to me, a guy in the Trekker Dan group, he had posted, um, he was like, oh, finally, you know, got my first real Blood Shark. Like, I absolutely love it. and. I kind of recognized from his pictures, even though it didn't have the lanyard on it anymore, I noticed some of the marks on the blood shark. And I was like, oh, I think that that's, that's mine. And at, at the time I was like, man, I, I do kind of miss having like a really, you know, a real Trekker Dan. Like to me, this is a real custom knife. Like Trekker Dan makes this knife. I think that that's really cool. Stem to stern, he's involved with the, production, you know, everything that goes into it. And um, so I reached out to him just on a whim and I was like, hey, like, I'm pretty sure that that's like my old one. Um, if you ever want to get rid of it, like hit me up. Like I, I would definitely be interested. And um, he immediately hit me up and was like, yeah, I'll sell it to you. And so I ended up, I think I got it for like 500 bucks or something like that. So I was like, oh, cool. Like I'll take it back. I've loved carrying it again. I have like that bicycle inner tube on it right here for scout carrying, which that's how I like to carry my fixed blade knives. But, um, I thought that was really cool. And it kind of struck that old saying, like, if you love something, let it go. Like if it comes back to you, it's meant to be. So I mean, this blood shark were, uh, we're meant to be. And along the same lines of talking about Tracker Dan and kind of custom knives, um, I don't know. I mean, um, I had that half face blades rant um, a long, long time ago, and it's actually kind of funny to me. People will still comment on it, but I, I mean, I'm in a different place. Like, it's like whatever. That's like water under the bridge. Like, I I have not participated in any half face blade drops or whatever, but. I think it's very interesting looking at the dynamic of like how people perceive half face blades to be where, you know, they'll call, you know, oh, the, the customs, right? The customs, that's the wood inlay, the different pins, whatever. Um, then you see like some of the behind the scenes footage and they have a ton of people working on knives. And so like my definition, I, I realized like, yeah, in this day and age where we live, uh, no, this time period, um, Everything is all about personal definitions, but my definition of a custom knife is definitely stem to stern. One guy is touching this thing, and um, so I don't know. It might it might just be me splitting hairs or whatever, but I do think that it's kind of interesting that we see a company like Half Face Blades, and um, you know, you, you get a custom, but there's thirty people that are touching it, and that's a little bit, we'll say, interesting to me. Um, with that, actually, I'm kind of a little bit disappointed. I thought that they'd be here by now, but um, one of my buddies I was uh, on a team with back in Virginia, he um, he actually makes knives and he's made me, if you scroll through some of my shorts, he made me the kukri that I have. He's also made me a few other fixed blade knives and um, he made Devin and I, I'll, I'll post a picture here as I talk, but um, just really beautiful, like Chad Nichols, Damastic, Damascus, we can't talk, Hold on a second. Uh, Damascus uh, blades, um, kind of just really nice like belt knives, but um, they should have been here, but they went UPS. So I don't really have high hopes for it, but um, really excited to get that. And again, I view that as a custom where it's one person who has the blank, designs it. I mean, literally I'll post here too. I'm giving myself work to do later. Um, and like graph paper of, you know, drawing this knife out, getting the blank, pounding it out sending it off for heat treating, doing all the finishing, doing all the belt, you know, sanding on it, honing it. Um, to me, that that's, that's a custom. All right, the next piece that I wanted to talk about was just kind of the, you know, I like from time to time when I do these videos to take like a litmus test of where secondary sales are and still a buyer's market. If you have cash, um, you can score some like really awesome things, but, um, you know, we still have the group going only blades greater than 250. 
we're well over 700 members now and, and that's been really cool but i will say i'm very thankful for the people that we've kind of set up to be moderators because it is a full-time job to ensure that scammers aren't getting into your group and so very thankful for them again i you wouldn't be able to be the only admin of a group and then you know <laughs> we'd all be really surprised when there were nigerian scammers in your group um it just happens man it's like flies on a carcass like they're they're gonna come through but these guys have done a really great job of kind of stopping them at the gate and and turning them away so very thankful for them but um but with that what i wanted to talk to you about um i know that i've in the past in these making amends i've talked about like reputation and then i really do think at the end of the day like your reputation is everything and um that being said, like, if you do have, like, a conflict with someone else, like, online with knife sales, etc., um, I, I just want to foot stomp. I mean, there, there's always the nuclear option of, like, blowing their spot up, tagging them, taking screenshots, whatever, which I encourage you to do for, for anything. I mean, obviously, you get vouchers before you send money to anybody, etc., but um, I, I just thought it was interesting we had one instance of a member who wasn't, I, I forget the details because this happens quite frequently like across the spectrum of secondary knife sales but the, at the end of the day like me as a participant in these groups I always keep in the back of my mind like you know it, it's kind of like going to a flea market right but it's a virtual flea market so like I mean there's going to be nicks there's going to be scrapes there's going to be whatever but the vernacular that people use like if you say something's mint that means it has never been used before so I always like err on the side of and I would you know, kind of advise people that are selling knives on the secondary market, err on the side of it's in worse shape than you think it is. And um, we had a case though, where, um, you know, there was a little bit of a miscommunication and the, uh, the buyer actually decided to completely go the nuclear option and post in every single group that he belonged to, you know, th this kind of misstep on behalf of the, or on the part of the, uh, the seller. And, <sighs> I don't know. I, I don't really like to see that just because like, even though you can like recover your reputation, I feel like it takes twice as long to rebuild at very least twice as long to rebuild your reputation as it does to make your reputation. So, you know, my advice would be and like what I kind of preach to, to, to our group is, you know, if you have something that doesn't match up, you have a bad experience buying, selling or trading, um, contact the admin first to kind of be that like intermediate piece and then go to the EDC, go, no go groups, et cetera, to uh, not put them on blast, but to uh, to make sure that they, they won't be able to continue in this like nefarious endeavor. So um, that, that's just kind of what I've seen. Like, so just being like cognizant of, you know, <laughs> like kind of reading the room and, um, you know, at your your first stop should always be the admin or moderator of a group to bring something to their attention because as a moderator and admin of several groups, um, that goes a long way and we're happy to help people out. Like we love knives, EDC gear, et cetera. Like we, we want everybody to be happy and we'll get to the we'll get to the bottom of it. So um to my plug on secondary knife sales right now. All right, the next topic and then we'll wrap it up here. Um you know, from time to time, I get some very interesting comments on my page, which that's the cost of doing business. It's not lost on me, but sometimes they kind of like sit with me and I'm like, wait, like, what What did you think kind of thing? Um, I'm kind of calling it the like, wait, you haven't heard of dot, 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 whatever. Like, it, yeah, you're a self-proclaimed knife reviewer and you've never heard of this knife, whatever. Like, I just kind of want to come out there and say it like I'm... I don't consider myself a knife reviewer. I'm a knife user. And, and if you watch my videos, like I, I never try to like hide it. I'm not holier than thou about anything. And like, I'm, I mean, even vernacular, like I'm still learning things, but I, I try to bring to the table, like my thoughts upon like putting hands on things and actually, you know, carrying them. But at the end of the day, no, like I am just, I'm just a dude like <laughs> who likes knives. Like, that's it. I, I don't claim claim to be anything. And so um, if you're, you know, if people are taking it more than that, or I'm supposed to be an expert, and like you, like totally like you caught me, I didn't know what that vernacular was, what that brand was, whatever, like, I don't know, like, I appreciate the comment, I'm sure that it helps me kind of get out there more. But I, I don't, I'm, I'm not that like, I, I literally am just a normal person who on the side likes knives and kind of what 
I wanted to get into kind of like use that as a springboard for is I really don't know what the future holds for me as far as like doing overviews of knives. I, I kind of got away from saying reviewing knives because then that's like, oh, you didn't get this tech spec right or this Rockwell hardness, whatever. Like it, it was always just a, a an overview thing of me. Hey, I have this knife. I carried it. This is my thoughts compared to the other ones. Um, what I'm finding though is that like the more knives I tried, the more they're very much alike and and i don't know if that's like kind of there's a larger life lesson in there but nothing really like i don't know i would say when i first started the channel i would have like aha moments where i was like oh like this is different or this is whatever and like now i see things and i'm like oh yeah all right it's a, it's a knife and so i don't know what that is and like i need to you know maybe internalize it more and and think about what that means but i really don't know what the the future of me and like doing overviews of knives are like lord knows i mean you know microtech um they came out with the new ram lock and that's kind of the new hotness um had the opportunity to to get one didn't I don't know. I, I just don't have the motivation to be like, oh yeah, this is a new locking mechanism or like the, what was it? The, the hinder like project X, like Devin got one of those. I, I could have tried one of those out. It has a tool so you can work the pivot on it, whatever. Like, I don't know. Like, I guess I'm, maybe it's just like, maybe it is a phase and, and I'll get back to kind of picking up those, you know, knives that are three, $500. Like, I'll, I'll give them, I'll take them for a rip and then, you know, do an overview and then pass them on the, on their way but um just haven't been motivated to do that um i also you know certainly a lot of the knives that i'm able to do overviews for are ones that are provided by you know my friends um i don't know i could scrape the bottom of the bucket and start reviewing bench maids or something like that like i, I don't know but I, but i want it to be relevant like i want to have some sort of like if i'm going to sit down and it sounds stupid, right? Like setting my phone up and, you know, I kind of like if I'm sacrificing time to do something, like I want to have something to say about it. So um, I don't know. That, that's kind of been, you know, where I've at, been at with things and um, we'll we'll see what the future holds. Like I'm definitely not opposed to reviewing more knives as they come. If they fall into my lap or I see something that I'm passionate about, I'll definitely pick it up. But I'm pretty content right now, which is uh, pretty cool. Like a year later after, you know, I'm doing so many YouTube videos, like I'm, I'm feeling good about the knives that I have, the ones I've tried, the one, I don't have any regrets about the ones that I've sold. Like I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. All right, now I had actually uh, planned one more thing, um, but I don't really feel like doing it. No, I'm just, I don't know. I'm gonna try to keep this a little bit shorter, but um, wanted to foot stomp uh, Countrycom, the website. So I ended up signing up a few months back for their, they have this like VIP, like swag thing. So you pay, I think it's about $98 a month, but then they send you a ton of stuff. And um, there's some really cool stuff in that. And um, it's made for some cool kind of like gifts and things like that. I mean, not, I don't know. I don't really want to like get into all of it, but I, I brought out like some of the stuff that I'm going to make this very quick, but, um, you know, really cool, like titanium adjustable wrench, um, compasses for your watch. Um, this is actually a mini grappling hook. I will post a picture of it cause it's pretty crazy. Um, you know, things for your keys, battery holders. Um, this is a Phillips and a flathead screwdriver key ring. Um, so might be cool to check out. I don't know. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of it and it's kind of like Christmas uh, cause you, you never know what you're going to get. Um, but, uh, but yeah, there's some really cool pieces of kit in there. And like I said, I, I like to actually kind of give it away. Like I kind of comb through it and see, see what I want, but, um, definitely a good way to go. And, and I think the next one that I'll, I get, I will try to do kind of like a live unboxing, but to be completely honest with you, some of the things I even need to look up, like I'll just be sitting there with a weird look on my face like what the fuck is this thing but um i'm always able to figure it out in the long run but probably not in real time so um with that we'll end this video um appreciate you all tuning in again this is going to be the, the i don't know it's been a while since i've done a making amends but um you know hope everyone's doing well staying safe staying healthy and um yeah hopefully we'll see you soon thanks